Joining me now is the newest addition to the UFC's middleweight division. He uh, defeated Alton Cunningham on Dana White's Tuesday night contender series this past uh, Tuesday night via first round TKO. It is Bavon Lewis here on the program for the very first time. Bavon, how are you? You're doing good, man. How are you guys doing? I'm doing very good. Thank you so much for asking, and I really do appreciate you taking the time today on this Thursday, just uh, less than 48 hours after this win. Has any of this sunk in? Has the fact that you're a UFC fighter sunk in yet? No, I mean, I had made a little post about being in the UFC, but still, I mean, I feel like that first fight would really do it for me. Uh, I still haven't had the time to sit back. I mean, went to sleep. I think I might have stayed up, uh, stayed up for 24 hours, but still, no, nah, it still hasn't sunk in, though. No. And as far as the actual fight, were you happy with it? I mean, a first round TKO, can it get any better than that? Yeah, oh, man, that that is actually what I was looking for. I mean, I visualized the fight a few times, and, you know, I was thinking of decision, but then I was thinking, and to be honest with you, I was thinking, man, first round, man, that'd be, that'd be saying something. Second round, okay, maybe I was playing playing around a little bit. But the third round, I was like, man, you take it to the third round, this guy is a prospect as I am, you know. They're not going to take, you know, he's as much of a prospect as I am. And um, I, I felt like, so, well, with that being said, yes, I'm actually happy with my performance. I, uh, yeah, I am. What's your mentality like going to this fight? Just because we all know you were on, you know, season one of Dana White's Contender Series last year. You were one of the you know, one of the only fighters to get a quote unquote developmental deal. That's not what you're looking for, though. You didn't get, you know, officially signed to the UFC. Uh, what is your mentality go- like going into just a couple days ago your fight? Is it just fingers crossed that second time's the charm? Yeah, you know, I feel like I had this one. In, uh... Well, I said, um, I believe I said it was just like going to, to pick up a package, you know, uh, just going to sign for it. I didn't feel like Cunningham was going to beat me at all. I didn't feel like he had a big threat. I respected him, although I felt that way about him. I still respected him, and it was more just about beating him. And then, uh, you know, I really felt like the way I was going to beat him, there was no doubt that the UFC was going to take me after this fight. You know, I didn't. And honestly, the way I've been feeling, I didn't want to, I don't know how I could fight anywhere else after, you know, doing what I plan on doing, to, you know, uh, last season. Well, that's what, was, that's what I was kind of going to ask you about uh, next. I mean, I don't know how much you paid attention to the first four or first three fights and if you saw the main event with Kevin Aguilar winning. I don't know if you saw any of that or if you were just fully, uh, you know, getting ready for your fight in the locker room and all that. But were you confident after the win that, there's no doubting you now. There's no way they can turn you down now. Well, yeah, like um, I can't even, I can't really give you an honest answer because uh, I wasn't really watching. But I did feel like it was a lot of, um, I believe it was, it was some aggression. Like it was a hard few fights, right? I think it was some finishes, right? There were a couple finishes. A few finishes. Uh, yeah, there there was one or two, but, but they were all in the red. Yep. Well, all right, so from what I was looking at, I was just looking at the red corner, the red corner being dominant, and I was like, well, I guess I'm just going to keep building off of that. Uh, so that's the only thing I really took from the fights that I was watching, just, you know, I wanted to keep building off a of good momentum that I was feeling in the red corner. So, you know, just just top that off. And so your name is called, you, you find out you are a UFC middleweight fighter, that second time was indeed the charm, you got the call, you got the contract, you are a UFC fighter. What is going through your head at that time, and what's your emotions? Um, man, I just felt, well, of course, excited, but uh, the words can come out, you know? Like I said, uh, uh, I swore a lot, there's a lot of swearing, but uh, <laughs> still, I still haven't got time, like, even... They're being there and then getting the news like that, I was really happy. It was, but it was more just because I could see everyone there that was happy for me. I still I still have yet to still feel the feeling that I'm – maybe I'm looking for it and I'm missing it. I don't know what it is, but just – I know what's next, you know. I know the next fight I have. I feel like I have a home now, you know. Before you would, I would walk around and, you know, what, what organization you fight for. I'm like, well, I don't know. I'm just fighting right now. But now I can say I fight for the UFC, and I'm just looking forward to that first fight. 
Or if you're, you're talking to like the casual fans or non MMA fans, you can say, I train UFC and you're not even lying. <laughs> right. You know, and I, that's, <laughs> I got a job, guys. I got a job. I got a career. <laughs> you do. Um, you, of course, as everyone knows by now, last year on the Contender Series Season 1, you were signed to this developmental deal. You were basically, uh, I shouldn't say pampered by the UFC, but they were keeping your eye on you, but they didn't sign you right. to an actual deal. Did you, you did you get to, uh, to spend some time time at the PI before now? Like, Did they send you out there and, and help you out? or What, what exactly did the de- developmental deal include? Uh, well, this developmental deal, so I, I like to call it a scholarship. You know, of course, it, it involved a, a, a little money, and um, uh, I don't know if I would say any special treatment, but, I, I mean, I still have to I have to do my part. I have to work uh, definitely to, you know, keep up my end of the deal, so all I have is my work. It was more of um developmental deal. I feel like it's a, it's a good gesture towards these guys that are still coming out, that are still hungry, that look forward to being in the UFC. It's not really for the, uh, you know, oh, he just came up short and he needs a chance. So, yeah, I've been to the PPI a few times, but I think a few people have. But other than that, I mean, the developmental deal, it was just more of a, a gesture to say, you know, keep pushing. You know, I, I like it. I look at it as a scholarship. Now, I know Greg Hardy is in a similar situation. It sounds like he, after his Contender Series pro uh, pro debut victory just uh, earlier, I guess last month it was now, uh, he signed a similar deal, and he signed a four-fight deal with Zufa, not the UFC, and now his upcoming second fight on Contender Series will be his first fight under the Zufa banner. Did you sign a, a, a contract with Zufa? Not the UFC, but with Zufa. Did, was that something you did or no? Uh, no. No, I didn't. I didn't sign a con- uh, anything with Zufa. Not just say it was still, you know, along the way the development to deal was still with uh, uh, the the few that get either just the matchmakers and stuff like that, just to make sure I was just taking. I don't know, taking care of. Hmm. So you didn't sign any contract or anything like that. The 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 first Zufa slash UFC contract you signed was just this week, correct? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, when they sent you back to fight for LFA, your last fight back in April uh, against uh, Colin Huckbody, what was your reaction? Were you was it just was it you, you had to take it, take it or leave it? Were you happy going back to LFA, or you know would you have rather been signed to the UFC before now? I mean, of course. I mean, I, I want to go to UFC. I mean, like everyone, everyone dreamed after contender series. I want to get the job done and go into the doors. But you know. They've been doing it for a long time. I figure, hey, whatever the next fight is, whatever it is, uh, I have to take it. I mean, I want to stay active anyway. I am the fighter, you know. So, uh, of course, it is uh, kind of take it or leave it thing. But, I mean, in this job, you know, the fights are, are scarce. You know, people are always trying to fight. And there's a lot of people, sometimes they can't get fights. Sometimes you, people back down and you're left without an opponent. So, yeah, I jumped on what I, definitely, I, jumped on what I could we're going back almost a year now, but when you did fight for the first time on Contender Series and you were informed, okay, you're not getting the UFC deal, but we're doing this developmental deal, did you think it would take two more fights to get signed, or what were your expectations after that? Um, Man, I would always hope for the next one. Uh, I really, on my uh, LSA fight, I really was training and uh, visualizing a really devastating win to maybe put it on to... Um, so that way they pick me up after that, you know, whatever the, the case may be on how I would get there. I was hoping, all right, even after the contender fight, I was like, man, there's a possibility that they would make me do another fight on the contender series again, you know, just to, you know, before this year is up, before the season is over, just to, you know, get me in the UFC. You know, it's only 6-0, and and, uh, you know, some people are taking them to get to 9-0, you know, 10-0. Some people, you know, taking, you know, they have to have a lot more fights to get to the UFC. So maybe they could have done that to me. You know, it's a uh, developmental league is pretty much of what they see. I'm developing as a fighter and, um, you know, whatever they see, whenever they see ready for me to make that step into the, the UFC, then I guess that was, um, that was their plan. So after the second fight, I guess that's what they saw. 
And between your first Contender Series fight and your LFA 38 fight, uh, there was about an eight-month layoff. Can you explain that? I mean, was that your choice not to fight for eight months, or was that a bit of a longer layoff um, than you had hoped for? Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a little bit longer than I had hoped for. I wanted to... I'm never a type to... Uh, I mean, I do like to ramble my momentum out, but after fighting a guy like Elias, you know, him being in a tough house, I was thinking, you know, just another step up, you know, the times that he hit me maybe could have been a finish. It could have worked out a little bit different with somebody a little more experienced, maybe just to, even just a little more experienced. So I uh, I didn't want to only fight. You know, I didn't want to have an eight-month layoff, but still uh, I wanted more, a little less, but the time that I took off and then going to look for a fight sort of put me in a position where, I, you know, the picking was small and, I, you know, I just couldn't get one. So, yeah, that's where the eight went. Interesting. Came up, but, uh, yeah. And now that you're a guy who's fought in the Contender Series twice, uh, you know, most guy, most fighters have only fought once, but you, I guess, have had the honor of, of, of being in that tough gym more than once. So what, what do you make of the Contender Series? I mean, for now that you're in the UFC and sort of looking back, I mean, would you recommend other prospects to go on this show, or would you do you think Ultimate Fighter is a better route? I mean, I've heard nothing but good things about Contender Series. Do you agree? Like, is it a good route to, to yeah, take I, pre-UFC? Yeah. I definitely agree. I like the road. Um, there's good. I guess there's always the pros and cons. I mean, the the ultimate fighter. You know, you you're away for X amount of time, and I don't really know how. You know that works out for some people. Some people can do it. Some people can't. But uh, I never really wanted to be the you know on you know the type of you know the ultimate the ultimate fighter process. So I do believe that the contender series is better. I feel like you get. The, the, some people can go on there with three fights. Some people, you know, can go on there with 15 fights. But then, you know, for that entry level, for that level, you know, to be the contender and always have a, a good eye on you to get to the UFC, uh, you go in there and you fight, you don't get there, but now they know your name. You go back there maybe a, a few weeks later or the following season, and, you know, you end up going to the UFC. Maybe you don't, but I do feel like it's a good pl- uh, platform for you guys like myself. You know, looking back, you know, I fought on there twice. You know, it took a year, yeah. a little less than a year to to get there. But you know, I'm grateful for that. Um, it, you know, I'm not the first one. You know, I probably won't be the last. But um, you know, it's it's definitely a good platform. You know, make a, a a good amount of money for that type of you know for a fight like that to you know to see just to see if you can go to the UFC. Um. Where does getting signed to the UFC rank among all-time life moments for you? Right now, I'm at I'm at my highest in my head. Right, right. My head is still in the crowd, and I still have yet to come down to see. Hey, kid, you're in the UFC. I have that that moment to hit me. I don't know what the emotion will be at that time, but right now, um, my head's in the clouds, and I'm. I'm still coming down. I mean, I'm, yeah. Do you think it'll be difficult? Um... Well, I will. Well, Sorry, I will go say, ahead. I will say this. Once I once I got there, I was, at moment, you know, at that moment, I was sizing everyone up. And I know the same thing was happening to me, you know. Yeah. Have you already started looking at the rankings, looking at the 185 division and, and looking, you know, trying to pick up maybe a first opponent, someone you match up well against? Have you looked at the division at all or are you just saving that for maybe your yeah, coaches look, or for I mean, down, I'm, the, I'm, down the road? Yeah. Yeah, saving that for the coaches. But, I mean, I would be lying if I said I didn't. I've been always, I've always looked at the rosters. I've seen you dropped out and moved on to Bellator. I've seen people that's, you know, maybe thinking about coming back to the UFC of uh, – and I've always looked at the top ten. I've always looked at the champions, and and now, you know, realistically, you know, we have to build our way up. So looking at the entry level, yeah, some big guys on the camp that came in off the contender series at 185 that that that's that looking at good matchups. I don't know names exactly, but I definitely watched the fight and saw the weight class, and definitely want to start looking at that. But um, you know, I know there's a yeah, they, yeah, definitely a few 85ers off the contingency that we have to start looking at if we're talking, you know, realistically building up in the UFC. 
And of course, making to, making it to the UFC is a big accomplishment checked off that bucket list. But do you think it'll be difficult at all not to, I guess, in a way, get ahead of yourself? And you got to keep in the mindset that, yeah, I've made it to the UFC, but the journey is just getting started. You, you know, it, it's just exactly. the one goal. It, do you think that'll be difficult to, to I guess, have that mindset and, and not get ahead of yourself? I think it, I've never been the type to get ahead of myself. You know, I've always, I have, you know, I'm, I have the brakes on. I mean, there's a certain things in life that I've been through that I've seen that maybe I could have pulled the plug on a little bit earlier on. Or, I mean, a little bit early, you know, or let go or such and stuff like that. But I'm really, you know, I, I, I won't, I know it's going to be a challenge because I can say this one time, but, you know, I've never, this is, this is this just the beginning. Like you said, you know, I have, I still have yet to find out and um just looking forward to that first fight. But, man, I do believe, and I wouldn't want to go to UFC and I wouldn't have come back from hard fights and lost fights to get to UFC to say that I can't beat the guy that's up there. That is a goal, but definitely going to play smart. But when I feel it, I'm definitely going to go for it, you know. Yeah, and I'm not... Opportunity. And I'm not even talking about necessarily fighting here, but just any career, anything in life, when someone sort of gets to the next level, they get a big raise at their job or they, they you know, reach an executive position or something, then they start sitting back and relaxing a little bit. But do you, do you feel like getting to the UFC will just make you train harder than you've trained before? I think I've, all, I've always trained as hard, but it's... I feel I've gotten just a, a little bit smarter. My IQ, I've written... I've listened just a little bit longer, a little bit harder, and I, I've always been the same. But I just feel like probably more people have seen it now, and have they've they get more people have got to witness it, and so now it's like, oh yeah, I've trained harder than I've ever trained. But trust me, this things have changed. You know, I've gotten better with things, but most importantly, I look at consistency, and that's definitely a key that I'm gonna or uh, something I'm gonna maintain through all of this is the consistency. You took very little damage this past Tuesday. When are you looking to get back in there for your official UFC debut? Man, I heard about a, uh, they were talking about a UFC card in uh, Canada coming up. I've heard about, I do want to fight this year. In December, right? I'm to fight twice, but I mean, yes, sir. And yeah, but I do want to fight this year. I want to fight before the year is over. I want to see those colors on. You know, I want to walk out, have a good walk out. My official UFC walkout this year. Why? Why Canada? That's uh, the UFC 231 uh, pay per view card coming up in, in Toronto early December. Now I'm Canadian myself, so I can say for San Canada is a great place. But why do you want to fight here uh, particularly? Well, I, I guess um, they have 85ers out there, or an 85er that's supposedly supposed to be on there. I uh, heard he was a. Uh, pretty good is I think it's Christian Savoy or something and he's looking maybe what if he goes to the UFC or something like that or maybe I just know that their fighters out there he's the ones out there and I they had him ranked ahead of me and in the uh, and I didn't even know that they're on this radio so maybe they're looking to put him in there or maybe that would be a good fight yeah well, Bavon, thank you so much for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, congratulations once again on the big victory this past Tuesday and, of course, signing with the UFC. Before I let you go, let my audience know where they can find you on social media and if there's anybody you'd like to thank or give a shout-out to, the floor is yours. Oh, cool, yeah. Uh, Instagram, you can find me at B-V-O-N-K-L. I'm called Bavonko. Uh, Twitter, same. Facebook, you know, my name, Bavon Lewis. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank everyone out here in Albuquerque, just anyone that whoever supported me. Uh, big shout out to LeVon Lewis out there and then many of my teammates uh, coming up, still rising out here, Josh Moreno at 185 and, you know, Chris Breezy has a LFA fight, LFA fight coming up soon enough. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you.